Today, we're rewriting echo, which prints out the command line parameters you give it with spaces in between. We'll write out our arguments the old, old school way and get the standard includes. Skip the first argument, and as long as there are arguments to get, we'll print them with printf, which stands for print formatted. Move on to the next argument, and if it exists, we'll put a space between it and the previous argument. And end with a new line. Run it. Oh, oop, it doesn't do anything with no arguments. Try it with some arguments, and that's echo. Looking at the flags, there's only one, which suppresses printing the new line. We'll also handle this strange case where the standard says that if the last argument ends with backslash C, we should not print a new line. Now this computer running Mac OS assures us it'll totally do that, and then doesn't, par for the course where computers are involved, but the BSD version does it properly, so let's do that too. I've disappointed Iron Chef Michiba by forgetting to write my menu of things to do, so before we move on, let's do that. To handle the dash n flag, we'll check first if there are args, and if there are, we'll use string compare to see if the first one is dash n. If so, we won't print the new line. Otherwise, we will. Declare that variable. It's 1994 and C doesn't have the boolean header yet, so we'll use an int. And we'll decide whether to print the new line or not. For the backslash C case, the conditions are this is more than just backslash C, because trying to print out the absence of a new line doesn't make sense. It's the last thing in the argument list, and the last arg ends with backslash C. So let's type those out. The first condition is satisfied if the length is more than two. The second is satisfied if there's no next argument. And the third is satisfied if the next characters are actually backslash and C. If those are all the case, we'll chop off the backslash C by appending a null byte to indicate the end of the string, and not print out a new line. We'll get the length with string length, and yeah, we're mixing K and R C and C C. that's just how BSD does. Check if it works. And yeah, we're good. All we've really done is just call printf. So let's dive into printf and see what's going on. We won't be rewriting anything, just looking into the code. Now, where does printf live? I tried to use c tags to jump to the definition, but boy, it got that wrong. Then I tried to use c tags to get a list of all the possible places it could be, but there are way too many. Since I know printf returns an integer, and I know how the code tends to be formatted, I can search for it directly. It's not exactly an improvement, but the bottom two look promising, and I can narrow it down. Here's printf, with the rare and fun ellipses, meaning a varying number of arguments. VA start and n handle getting and releasing those arguments, and it looks like the real work is done by kv printf. Ooh, look at all of this. And we were doing so well. Okay, not giving up yet. We got this. It looks like this calls the macro pchar defined here, which I'm guessing stands for put character. Really, you could give it any function that takes a letter in the location of some arguments. And yeah, printf calls it with the function put character, which is defined here. And put character calls through to teletype put character. which makes sure it won't be interrupted and calls teletype output. I've been saying teletype this whole time, and at this level it's becoming clear exactly what that means. This is an actual typewriter we're talking about. This switch statement is telling a telephonic typewriter, a teletype, how many spaces to move the carriage forward for each letter. For most letters it's one, but for a tab here is defined to move eight columns forward, and when a new line or a carriage return happens, it returns the carriage to the first column. We can look up the structure of a teletype here, and it's a mix of the things a typewriter needs to know about and the things a computer needs to know about. Like it has the output column, which is the carriage. Usually our text editor and terminal programs take care of this kind of stuff for us, but we can look through to the actual behavior if we write a program that directly prints characters to our terminal. So we'll get a character from standard in, and we'll exit if we read a control C, otherwise we'd have to close our terminal to leave and print whatever character we get. Run it, and I'm still in C. Map a key to run this as Ruby. 
and we have a working typewriter. I can move the carriage backward and forward to overwrite things. When I hit enter, it does a carriage return, and when I hit control L, it does a line feed. And I'll need them both to start a new line. That's it. If you enjoyed this screencast, check out rewritinghistorycasts.com, where we're finishing up writing the first three commits of Git. Also, you can find the source code for this episode there. I'll put a link in the YouTube description. Finally, if you enjoyed this screencast, please tell people about it. I'm only able to keep doing these with your support. Thank you.